hysteria of infection. Oh, this is true, I say to you. Trigger warning. What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. Hello if you're new. Some disclaimers before the video starts is all accusations provided are alleged until proven otherwise. I never state that someone is guilty until proven so. Second is do not send hate to anyone mentioned in this video. All links provided are for educational purposes only. So hello everybody. I'm going to be addressing the Manson video that I did five months ago. Uh, as of February 1st, Miss Wood confirmed that she was talking about Manson in that video and I wanted to talk about just the comments and the influx of things that came my way because of that video this month. I never expected it to blow up the way it did. Um, the whole reason I made that video was because I saw a tweet saying that, you know, maybe you shouldn't support Manson and stuff like that and I wanted to make a video about why those tweets were being shared. The video was circling of Miss Wood talking about this horrific abuse that she suffered and I wanted to make a video as to with all the information that people had left under their tweets. That's what my videos are for. I like to raise awareness about whether you want to, you know, investigate further into an artist about allegations that are against them and I'm never saying that because someone has a Twitter thread, that Twitter thread is immediately foolproof and the artist is guilty. That is not what my videos are for. Never, ever, ever have I stated that and that's why I have disclaimers in the beginning of my videos to address that. I also changed my disclaimers as of that video because there was a very huge influx of negative, violent comments against Miss Wood and against w women who testify against abusers in general and those abusive comments were just so negative and I didn't want anyone who maybe survived something like that to see those negative just disgusting comments. If there was someone defending Manson in the comments with just vile intentions towards somebody else I did have to take it down or the person took it down. But if someone was sharing links about Manson, I don't take those comments down because if someone ever has any piece of information or evidence that they want me to include or look at, I will look at that. I've updated the Ashley Purdy video and the Mike Fuentes video this month due to people coming to me and saying, hey, you know, I have this piece and I want to show you. I will start linking my social medias down in the description in case anybody wants to really communicate with me and be like hey I, you know I found this link or I found something to show you I don't mind those type of DMs but negative abusive comments are just not appropriate and unnecessary sometimes you could definitely be a fan of Manson and, and feel hurt by these allegations I understand because I make videos off of musicians that sometimes I personally listen to and it's not easy if you appreciate or respect that artist to listen to these allegations but they are out there um and to wrap it all up i want to thank everybody who shared my video liked it left me a really supportive comment or you know left me some very nice feedback i really appreciate all of those comments and all of those people who take the time out of their day to you know send nice things my way so thank you so much for the support and without further ado i will leave a timestamp for those who kind of want to skip this part, but it, it is something that I wanted to address because I, I felt weird to just jump into a video and not address that video. So again, thank you so much and I will see you guys later. Tiny Moving Parts vocalist issues apology following sexual assault allegation. This is dated March 7th, 2019. I will link the Twitter account down below. They do include a very extensive Twitter thread if you are so inclined as to read that for yourself, but I will be including parts of the document she wrote about Dylan. 
Tiny Moving Parts vocalist Dylan Matheson has issued an apology following an anonymous sexual assault allegation made against him just over a week ago. Matheson released a statement apologizing for his actions and announcing that proceeds from Tiny Moving Parts' upcoming tour would be donated to charities. On February 28th, an anonymous allegation surfaced on Twitter accusing the Tiny Moving Parts singer of an alleged sexual assault. Today, Dylan took to the band's Facebook page to release his statement. He begins, Hey everyone. Last week, I found out that an accusation of sexual assault was made against me by an anonymous individual. I apologize for how long it's taken me to respond. I really wanted to take the time to address the claim with the openness it deserved and do right by the per other person involved. I sincerely apologize to the person who was harmed by my actions. I value this person's privacy and want to do all I can to respect them while validating their experience however they allow me to. It was never my intention to violate anyone or make them feel unsafe. Since this happened, I have learned a lot about the difference between expressed and implied consent and also now recognize how some of my behavior could have been harmful. Also, for the sake of transparency, I want to share with you the steps that have been taken since last week. When the actions were brought to my attention, I looked into the best way to get in touch with this person and provide them a space to safely share their story while retaining privacy and confidentiality. I reached out to a professional mediator who has experience with sexual assault survivors and restorative justice and they agreed to get involved. Mediation was offered and the person responded that they wanted a week to think it over. During that time, I saw a therapist who has helped me to better understand how my actions in the past could have had harmful consequences. After a week, they came back and said they weren't ready to go through with mediation, which is 100% their right that I validate and respect. It's their story and their choice to tell it whenever or if ever they are ready. The door is always open if they'd like to pursue mediation in the future. Moving forward, I would like to make some positive and restorative steps, including donating the proceeds for our upcoming tour to Peace Over Violence, RAIN, and the Joyful Heart Foundation. Work to raise up marginalized voices by giving them time to speak on stage about important issues and table at our shows. Commit myself to ongoing therapy and continue to learn more about how I can do better while holding myself and others accountable. I apologize to anyone who has been hurt, disappointed, or triggered by this news. Please respect this person's privacy by allowing them to remain anonymous and refrain from mes messaging or harassing them. Thank you for the time to read this, Dylan. So now I'm going to read a few pieces from the document that the Twitter user linked in one of their Twitter threads. This page is page one out of nine so i'm not going to read all nine in july 2013 when i was 20 years old i went with two of my friends to a show the front bottoms played with tiny moving parts until that night i had never heard of tiny moving parts or dylan before after the show i was briefly introduced to dylan by members of the front bottoms my friends and i were then invited by the front bottoms to a motel to hang out at the motel, my friends and I got our own room, then went to meet up with everyone else in a different room. There were about 15 people in and out of that room throughout the night. For most of my time there, I sat on a bed talking to people I already knew. I didn't talk to Dylan. While it was normal for me to drink before shows, I didn't have anything to drink on this day until I got to the motel. Because I wanted to go to get drunk before the night was over. I ended up drinking way too much, too fast, in order to make that happen. Around the time everyone started leaving to go back to their own rooms, I blacked out. The next thing I knew, the room was dark and I was lying down on one of the beds puking off of it. I heard people speak to each other and someone in the room got up to get me a garbage can, quickly turning a light on and off as they did. That's the only thing I remember after blacking out. When I woke up the next morning, I found myself completely naked in a bed next to Dylan. He was also naked and had the covers pulled up over both of our heads. I could tell other people were also sleeping in the room with us, and I later learned that at least one member of the f front bottoms and one other member of Tiny Moving Parts were there. When Dylan noticed me waking up, he immediately began cuddling into me and tried to fool around with me for what I had assumed was the second time. I was in complete shock. I had no idea what happened or how it happened. I didn't even remember talking to Dylan the night before. 
Because there was little privacy and because I didn't know Dylan, I felt pressured to be quiet, to not freak out, and to keep the status quo of the room, even if that meant putting up with or going along with Dylan's advances to a very minor extent. Looking back on it now, it's hard for me to understand why I pretended to be okay, but at the time, I just didn't know how else to deal with the situation. I didn't have time to process any of it. I didn't know Dylan or some of the people in the room. I didn't know where my clothes were. I didn't know how to leave. I was afraid to admit that I didn't know what happened or to give any indication that something was wrong. I was even afraid to be rude or to be a bother to anyone else, to everyone else and to somehow make this worse for myself than it already was. Given how bad the situation was, there was no good way to react to it. All I wanted to do was get through it. Eventually, someone knocked on the door, everyone started getting up, and Dylan handed me my clothes from his side of the bed. I then got dressed and stayed in the room for a bit to clean before going back to my own room. When I got to my room, I immediately told my friends what happened. I said that I woke up naked next to Dylan, that I had no idea what happened, and that it continued in the morning. They were just as shocked and confused as I was, but at the time, none of, the, none of us saw this as assault. My boyfriend, who was one of these quote-unquote friends I'm referring to, understandably saw this as cheating and got upset with me. All I could say was that I didn't know Dylan, that I wasn't interested in him, and that nothing was premeditated or intentional. My friends argued that if whatever happened continued in the morning when I wasn't blacked out, then my claim that I didn't want something to happen couldn't be true. Since at the time, I didn't know why on earth I let something happen in the morning. I didn't know how to explain myself, and I didn't attempt a defense. About a week later, I was talking to a member of the front bottoms I trusted and decided to ask him about that night. This member wasn't the one who was in the room during the assault, but since they were close friends with the person who was, I figured they might might have been told about what happened. I explained that I didn't know how I ended up with Dylan and asked if he'd heard anything about it. He then said that he told Dylan. He was told that Dylan fingered me that night. I reiterated that I had no memory of it and that I didn't know what happened. Again, neither of us saw this as assault. As time went on, I was able to start processing the situation. I was in utter disbelief about it. I felt violated, humiliated, and miserable. I hate that someone who felt like a complete stranger to me had touched me. I hated that I couldn't remember what happened, but I also didn't think I had the right to complain about any of this. I blamed myself for drinking too much and thought it was all my fault. I didn't think I could talk about it or express how I felt if it was something I had done to myself. Plus, every friend I told about it afterwards only saw it as cheating. No one recognized it as assault, not even me. In the end, it seemed like all I could do was accept it and try to move on. I pretty much just shut up about it from that point forward. Over the next few years, I saw Dylan again a handful of times at or after shows. It was only through these encounters that we started to get to know each other, but even then, we hardly did. We were always more like minor acquaintances than friends, and I was always uncomfortable around him because of what happened. Since I didn't understand that first encounter to be assault, I didn't feel like my discomfort with him was valid, and I always pretended to be fine. Looking back at it now, almost every time I saw Dylan again, he either tried to get me alone with him or he straight up asked me to hook up with him. One of those times, I thought that if I gave him a chance and I might be able to change the way I felt about him. We kissed and started to hook up, but that ended up only making me feel worse and I left in the middle of it. In this pinned tweet by the Twitter account, it reads, I was sexually assaulted by Dylan Matheson of A Tiny Moving Parts in 2013 and by Kieran O'Donnell, formerly of the Front Bottoms, in 2015. When I tried to speak up, I got blame, shame, and silence I didn't deserve. I felt so alone. I don't want that for anybody else. A section of the Twitter thread reads, When I named Kieran and Dylan of Tiny Moving Parts on Twitter in February 2019, neither Kieran nor the Front Bottoms responded to my accusation. Even though they both had more than enough information to address it, they didn't even respond when Dylan made a statement of his own. In May 2020, I brought this up on Twitter again, this time bringing up the front bottoms again. Neither 
Kieran, nor the front bottoms made any sort of response. These situations have taken so much from me. These situations continue to take so much from me. Yet these people and these bands do nothing or do the bare minimum and then feel justified in pushing forward like this is all in the past. It's not. If we are ever going to meaningfully address assault in situations like this, the end goal cannot be clearing a band's name by letting them cut ties with abusers or harm doers while expecting absolutely nothing else from them. All right, I'm going to end the video here. Again, the Twitter threads, all that is linked down below. That concludes this video. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know how you're feeling in the comments. Subscribe if you want to see more videos in your feed. Press that bell to be notified when a new one drops. Stay safe and stay educated, everyone.